All right, well, thank you for your patience. We do have handouts. I don't know if everybody has them. You should also have them in your email so you have the electronic version of this. Um, so I'm Mary Catherine Starkey, and I also have with me Shelby Albers. Hi. We are from Institutional Research and Advanced Analytics. And we were asked to come as part of your data management series, and we're gonna tell you a little bit about Tableau today. So, these are the things we plan to cover. Um, you do have computers with you. There are a lot of links in the presentation. Feel free to jump in and look at anything while we're going through it. And also, please feel free to kind of ask questions. Um, stop us. I've got a seven-year-old and a four-year-old, so I am used to being stopped in the middle of a sentence. We can just kind of have stop and go conversation, not a problem at all. So some of the things that we're gonna be talking about is the business intelligence life cycle, regulatory and external reporting, and then what my team does to support university initiatives. So that's kind of a little bit about us. Shelby is gonna go through and show you our IRAA website, which is where we put all of our Tableau dashboards. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about Tableau just in general. What's the difference between desktop and public? Um, how can you get access to those? We're gonna look at some different things that I found out on the Tableau Public Gallery that I thought were interesting. And talk about if you want to continue with this, training opportunities and our Lexington Tableau user group. All right, so first of all, this will just be real quick, but my team supports everything from the beginning of the business intelligence life cycle to the end of the business intelligence life cycle. So that's things like taking data from different systems. So here on campus, we have the IRIS system that has all of the transactional data. I think you all have a database that has some data in it. We can take that, put it into our data warehouse, and then do reporting on it. So that's just what a business intelligence life cycle is. The part that we're gonna be talking about today is really the BI results. Really, our tool that we chose to use is Tableau, but there are several different tools available in that space. So have you ever heard of the Gartner Magic Quadrant? So Gartner is um, a research, the research analyst, and they go out and they do surveys, they do research on what are the best tools. So this one is specific to the business intelligence and analytics platform, but they do it for everything you can think of. UK actually has a partnership with them, so we get access to more of their detailed research. Um, I didn't put the link in here, but there is a link that you can go to if you search Gartner UK. There's a special link you put in your LinkLu user ID and your LinkLu password, and you can get access to articles that the general public can't get access to. So when we were looking at business intelligence tools, um, this was back in 2014, we took a look at the magic quadrant to see you know, what's out there. So the leaders have been Tableau, Click, and Microsoft. So I kind of watched those as the years go on. We picked Tableau because at the time it was the industry leader, and it still continues to be right up there in that top right quadrant. But I've also been really interested in the Microsoft tools. Um, since here at UK, we do have so many other Microsoft tools, and um, it, it, I've tested it out. It's a good one to be looking at. So. If after you leave here today, if you're looking at not just Tableau, if you want to take a look at Click and Microsoft, those are other analytics tools that I would recommend. Um, some things that my team does with Tableau, uh, we're responsible for submitting out data to external bodies. So things like iPads. There's actually an iPad library survey that Judy Wizza help us, helps us fill out. Um, there's a bunch of other things that we do, specifically for libraries, we do the US News main survey. They ask a bunch of questions about uh, library offerings. We do Peterson's, and then there's a Southern University group that did a library salary survey that, I, that we were asked to fill out. We filled that out and then got a bunch of information back on benchmarking. So I just wanted to kind of point these out as things that my team is involved in that I thought you all either may be aware of or may be interested in learning more about. Um, for benchmarking, IPED, since we send our data to IPEDs, we also get a bunch of data back on other schools. So this is actually a public resource that you can go out and you can pull data down. And part of what you need for Tableau is an interesting data set. So 
Uh, I mean, one thing you could do is go pull down some benchmarking data and then do some analysis in Tableau about that data. Some other things that our team does that just um, span the university, we did the strategic plan metric development. Um, so all of the goals for the strategic plan, we provided the data to kind of figure out what the baseline was and where we want to be in 2020. And then we update that each year with new data. And the UK Leads Initiative, um, this is one that the team has been involved in. So we have data scientists on our team and they, Craig Rudick, um, who somebody let him go on vacation during this presentation and <laughs> then Brew and his ACL. So yeah, Toby and I ended Love up here. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but Craig Rudick, the director of institutional research, um, he's been doing a lot, of, a lot of analysis on unmet need. And what that analysis has led to is what you may have seen kind of in the news and where UK is moving is we're going to, um, to need-based aid rather than merit-based aid. So that's some of the research that we've done through Tableau in order to um, help change a university policy. And I just flew through all of that. Do you have any questions or... Next, we're gonna move into Shelby's demonstration. Anything around that that you'd like to hear more about? Yeah. Very nice to meet you. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. So, so I'm just curious, uh, do units on campus contact you to go out and find data for this? Or? We, and, and this is part of what Shelby will be talking about, our main focus is is student data, HR data, and financial data that would span the university. Um, but yeah, we do get contacted by units. You know, some people will say, "Hey, I'm interesting, and in, I'm interested in integrating my data into the data warehouse, integrating it with other data, and then being able to report on that." Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. So, so that was actually my first thought when we got the call was, oh, cool, we're going to take some library data and we're going to bring it into our HANA data warehouse, marry it up with some of the student data and report out on it. Um, so yeah, I was, I was very excited to come here and talk with you all, first to tell you about Tableau, but also I think there are some opportunities going forward where we could work together and, and do some data integration and analysis. Yeah. I think that I think that could be something that we look into yeah I'm not sure I'm not sure where that overlaps with us and maybe mm -hmm. CELT or or mm -hmm. some other places on campus but yeah I, I'm interested in that so love to hear more about that all right I will hand it over to Shelby All right, am I good on the audio? Is somebody still listening to me? <laughs> oh, well, we'll just roll with it anyway. All righty, so my name is Shelby Albers. I'm also part of the IRA team, and I normally do um, Tableau. So we have open labs for Tableau on the first and third Friday of every month. And so we invite all of our users out in the community who don't know Tableau or have been very, you know, good at using it already. We invite all of those people to come and sort of hear about our discussions on what we're working with in Tableau. But um, that very first hour, we do a beginner hour and I usually lead that. So I'm gonna go through that presentation with you all um, so that you can get a better understanding of what kind of data we have as of right now, how to answer questions that would um, come up on a daily basis for you all and wanting to know information about the university and how to answer those questions using data and then also start to explain a little bit the differences between the different tablet platforms. So I'm going to go ahead and log into our website and I'll also show you, um, so this is going to be um, a presentation as well and it is available on our website. So our website is uky.edu backslash IRAA. So if y'all are at your computers and want to follow along, feel free to. Oh, cool. The new, we just put this new image carousel up on it. We just overhauled our website about a couple of months ago, so it's very easy to use. I'm a lot better navigation than it used to be, and there's a lot more data in there, and we just added this fun little image carousel, too. So we're getting fancy. 
But so if you want to go and learn some more about Tableau, if you have questions after this presentation or can't remember something that I mentioned, you can go back and follow along with this. Um, so you're going to go into resources and support and then learn more. And then there is a view introductory presentation. So that's what we're going to look at. All right, so with the IRA team, um, we make use of two major data tools. So Mary Catherine already talked about we use IRIS. So SAP HANA is our database. That's where we get all the data collected into our data warehouse, which is HANA. Um, it has information on students. So thinking transactionally, every time a student books a course or unbooks a course, um, when they enroll, their progression as they move along. We also have um, information on HR, so faculty, um, as they move in between positions and things like that, um, as well as regular employees. And then um, we're working on incorporating some more financial data as well. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of data out there in our HANA database. And then we use Tableau, which is our visual reporting tool. So we really like Tableau and the fact that it helps our users to interact with data. So instead of it just being static data reports with Tableau, you can really engage with the data, use the different features of Tableau in order to get to the information that you are particularly looking for. So that way, instead of customizing things specifically for people, we can make a general um, kind of report and give it out to the masses so that you can customize it yourself. And then we provide our data to our users through di two different portals. Um, first of all, we give it through the IRA website. So that is all of our kind of official reporting um, about the university. We have our Tableau dashboards embedded within the website. So all the same functionalities of the Tableau dashboards are going to be available just to anybody who has access to a computer. And then we also have Tableau servers. So that I like to think of it as like a big Google Drive of Tableau workbooks. So once you have access to Tableau server, you can have permissions to certain folders that have data pertaining to your college or business unit. So for you all, it could be the libraries and you could go in there and find workbooks that either our team has made or other um, Tableau desktop users have published up to there and use that um, as a way to get information. So Tableau server, this is just openly available to everybody or do you find you request access yes. to it. But it's free. Yep. yep. The Tableau yeah. server version is free. Yep. Yes. So I was just wondering this tablet, can you go back? Oh, yeah. So she what, said, Shelby, can repeat the question? Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. Okay. So she asked, oh, right. um, is Tableau server is it a free product and it is so you will you can request access to tableau server and then it has to go through um what is that called apo yeah ASO. ASO. ASO security Office. yes so somebody gives you permission um within your organizational unit and then you can just log in and that'll, that'll be a part of the presentation later but you can log in just using your link blue credentials and that will um allow you entry into it but it's just a url that you go to in order to access the tableau server yeah so are you saying it's free to anyone at UK or anyone at all? Anyone at UK? Yes. Okay. Yes. So nobody. That's why our website is kind of our public version of our data, but you can get to some more stuff within Tableau Server because you are a part of the university. All right, so now that you know that we have data and we provide it to people, what are you going to do with it? So, you know, there's lots of data out there, but what are you going to do? So you can use the data to answer questions that would be related to the daily operations of your business unit. Um, so some common questions that we get about the data that we have, um, has the number of undergraduate students enrolled in a particular college grown after a time? Um, how many faculty in a college are underrepresented minorities, you know, filling out different um, sort of accreditation surveys and things like that. These are kind of some typical questions that you would see. Um, so similarly with uh, what Mary Catherine said about the libraries, how they ask us how many, um, what was it, electronic copies of, of books you all have or how many like physical copies do you have, answering questions like that. So where should you start in order to try to access some of this data? So we recommend starting at our website, which again was uky.edu backslash IRAA. And then within there, um, we have the interactive fact book. So the IRAA office used to present, or used to produce a uh, PDF version of a fact book, and it had some very overarching numbers across the different categories, like enrollment and faculty. 
um, a couple of different financial related things like the budget and revenue and things like that. Um, so this is just the interactive Tableau version of that. And with that, you also get a lot more functionality than what you would get out of a printed PDF. Um, so we're actually going to leave the presentation part of it and I'll actually go in and show you all um, what we have out on our website and go from there. So we will click on this URL. And then so like I mentioned, the interactive fact book. And so once you're here, we have a couple of different options right here, these buttons. So we have quick facts. So those are going to be um, very quick, high level um, numbers about the university. You're not going to be able to break those down um, any further within that specific page, but you can get um, an overarching you know, view of what, what the data you're looking at. Um, within student data, we have uh, information about admissions, enrollment, the whole process of a student's time here at the university. So going through credit hours earned, um, degrees awarded, retention and graduation rates, things of that nature. Our faculty and employee data, we don't have as many workbooks out there on the website right now, but we are working on getting that expanded. But one thing that you can find out there that is very useful, we have head counts for both faculty and employees. Um, so you can look at that information as well as a couple of things that are particular to faculty. Um, so that's why they have their own specific workbook because faculty have, you know, title series and tenure status, things like that. So we have them split up so that you can look at those specific qualities. And then we don't have as much financial information available right now as well, but we do have a uh, workbook that contains the university budget. So that was a project where we worked with the university budget office in order to look at the data and work with them to get that put up on our website so that we could provide that to users as well who are coming to the website and wanting to find out that information. So I'll go ahead and show you all the quick facts because if you were coming to the website, you don't really know what data you're looking for yet. You kind of have a question, but you don't know what's going to answer it. Um, if you go to the quick facts, so this itself right now, this whole like blue bar area, that is a Tableau workbook, um, one kind of version of it. So within here, I have it broken down so that there are categories that match the same buttons. And then within the categories, there are boxes for each um, workbook that is also out underneath that button from where we were before. Um, so that's going to have that overarching data in it, and then you can kind of look through all of those. So we've got, you know, just the overall admissions for um, incoming freshmen, and then we've got an enrollment breakdown that was similar to what used to be in the printed fact book. Um, so then if we were to keep scrolling, we could see more things. All of these correspond, like I said, with a workbook. Um, within the website and then we also see our faculty and employee data and then financial data so like I said there's not as much on that right now but we're working on it but say you're looking on this and you're like oh okay so enrollment data is the data that I need so you can click on the title within quick facts and it'll take you right to the Tableau workbook um, that it corresponds to so here you can see more information about enrollment. And if you were to know right when you went to the interactive fact book, what kind of data you were looking for, you could also just simply go to the student data because you know enrollment is about students and then click enrollment and demographics and get to the same exact thing. So now that we're here on the visualization and we can see what a Tableau dashboard looks like, I'll point out a couple of uh, key features of Tableau workbooks. So there are a few things that are just kind of Tableau basics, but then there are also things um, that we've incorporated into the workbooks to make them more useful. Um, and then this is all on our, on the interactive fact book page under the quick reference guide. So there are little animations um, on this page that also walk through these same things that can help you see what is going on with the Tableau workbook. And this is especially helpful for people who have never worked with the Tableau workbook before, or if you just need um, a refresher on how to do something. Um, so I'll go through those now. So on a Tableau workbook, there are multiple pages within the workbook. Um, so that displays the data in different ways. You know, there's reasons why you would want to display data differently. So if you're looking at data over time, a time series is usually a good thing to have. Um, if you're wanting to look at parts of a whole, a pie chart is usually a good thing to use. Um, so different ways to display the data. That's why we have multiple pages. We're providing it in multiple different ways. 
Um, with Tableau, there are tool tips. So if you hover over um, any of the data points within the visualization, a tool tip will pop up. It'll bring forth information about the data that's on there. It's usually the same information you could get from just reading the chart itself. Um, but one of the things that I do usually include in there that's not on the visualization itself is a percent of total. It's usually pretty helpful for people, a common question people have. Um, so it's available in the tooltip. You can also highlight data to bring it to the forefront. Um, so if you're looking at something, especially when the marks on the visualization are very close together and they're hard to read, um, you can click on any of the data or you can click on it if there's a legend. You can click on the legend and it'll make the um, mark that you're looking for stand out and it will gray out the rest of it so that you can really bring forth um, the information you're looking for. And you can undo that by just clicking on any white space in the visualization. And then one of the very self-service features of Tableau and why we like to use it um, so that our users can be very specific with the data they're looking for, Tableau has filters. So you can use any of the fields within a data source and make it a filter so that you can look only at the specific data you're wanting to look at. So some common things, if we have um, users out in the colleges who only want to look at the data from their college, they can filter for just their college and only look at that. Um, if you want to change the year at which you're looking at, that's a filter. And you can select multiple years, usually, if you want to, depending on how the filter is set up. Um, but filters allow you to get really specific with the data set that you're looking at so that you can answer those very specific things. So those are kind of the things that are generic to Tableau anyway. Um, but some of the things that we've used, um, so population selectors, these are kind of like huge filters. Um, so there are very many business rules in the um, way that we have to report things to our federal regulatory bodies as well as our state ones. Um, so especially on the enrollment workbook, if you're out there looking at that, you'll notice that there are different populations within this um, filter that you can select and it'll go ahead and have those business rules applied to it so that uh, our users don't have to guess which filters they're supposed to apply in order to get to that population, which is really nice. Um, so it's kind of like a foolproof way for our users to be able to get what they're looking for. And then there's also text out to the side of these population filters that explains what those business rules are and that will change as you change the different population. And then there's also a time series split. So traditionally on all the workbooks, there's a time series page at the very front. Um, just because that's usually what people like to look at. They like to look at data over time. Um, so instead of using a filter, say you had a question, you wanted to compare male and female enrollment over time. Instead of filtering for female and then just looking at it and then filtering for male and looking at it and then comparing it after having written it down or something, um, you can use the time series split and split the population of the students so that you can compare male and female at the same time on the visualization itself. So those are just some of our basic things that you can do with Tableau, how to interact with it, and um, get to the questions you're looking for, or answers to the questions you're looking for. So does anybody have questions at this point? I'm gonna go through um, kind of how to answer a specific question using the filters and everything on Tableau, but do we have any sort of primary questions? Yeah. So I know you've already got all this workbook set up with filters that people can use, but is the raw data available for people to do their own manipulation? Do you know what I mean? So we don't have it to where you can download the data right now, um, at least specifically with our website version of it. Um, so obviously people other than UK can come to this website and look sure. at our data and they obviously do not have the same sort of, you know, permissions to look at data as, as you all would. Right. Um, so it's not available through our website to download that data, but on Tableau server, there's an option to look at the data um, on there. And the reason for that is security. Sure. But there are certain people I mean, who I don't know what should anybody would need to do such a thing. Yeah. As, so. yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Alrighty, so one of those questions that I mentioned before, um, so has the enrollment in a specific college grown over time? So we'll go ahead and start from the very beginning and try to answer that question um, using the different features of a Tableau workbook. So we'll start from the beginning and go through the interactive fact book because that's where all the data is. And then we'll go to student data because we're looking at enrollment. And then the enrollment workbook. 
All right, and so we're looking at data over time. So like I mentioned, a time series is probably gonna be the best way for us to look at that and get that answer to our question. So I'm going to pick the College of Arts and Sciences. We're gonna see if the fall enrollment of Arts and Sciences has grown over time. Um, and we're gonna look specifically at undergraduate students. So this enrollment workbook does have that population of student selector. Um, so this is on the enrollment one and the incoming students workbooks as of right now, because those have very specific populations that this tool is very helpful for um, getting down to those uh, specific groups of people. So we're going to use population selector to pick undergraduate. I'm gonna go ahead and pick undergraduate CPE. Um, so that's our state regulatory body. The difference between CPE and the IPEDS counts of undergraduate. Um, IPEDS does not count students who are auditing all of their classes, and that is explained within the text here. But I'm just going to make the choice to pick CPE for right now for this example. And then I'm going to pick College of Arts and Sciences. So in order to just get that, you can click this all to deselect all of them, and then I'll just click Arts and Sciences. Sorry, am I in your way? Okay. And then you can apply that filter. And then we're already on the fall semester. So we can now see we've got all of our pieces of our question. So undergraduate in the College of Arts and Sciences and fall enrollment. So now we can look at our chart and we can see that the enrollment's been pretty steady in the College of Arts and Sciences um, over time. So they're doing pretty good with their uh, recruitment and their retention efforts. Um, so yeah. So that's one question, and then I'll go ahead and pose another one. Um, we'll look at some faculty data right now. So one of those other things that I mentioned, um, looking at the number of faculty or underrepresented minorities. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try and answer a question about that. So again, we'll go back out to home. And then under the interactive fact book, this time we are going to select faculty and employee data. And like I mentioned before, we have a specific workbook for our faculty just because there are those um, additional attributes of faculty that are not uh, relevant to all other employees. So we'll go ahead and click on the faculty workbook. Can I ask a really quick question? Yeah, sure. So are you using workbook and dashboard interchangeably? Yes. Um, so workbooks and dashboards are kind of the same thing. A workbook can be a collection of dashboards. Okay. So this whole thing itself. Um, so you see that there are multiple tabs. There are three tabs up here. This is a workbook and these tabs represent dashboards. So okay, cool. yes. Yes, sorry about that. I, I tend to use them very interchangeably even though they are technical different things. So then this time I'm going to pick, let's look at the College of Medicine and see how many underrepresented minority faculty there were in 2016-17 school year. Um, so because we're wanting to know a demographic related feature, it's kind of parts of a whole thing, we're going to click on faculty demographics. We're not going to look at the time series. And then we are already selected for academic year 2016-17. All of our data on the website defaults to the most current term. And then we're going to select the College of Medicine. And then we're going to select, um, so underrepresented minority, um, that is defined by CPE. There are five ethnicities that are considered underrepresented minority. And so on our ethnicity filter, we have made it to where there are labels out to the sides of those five. So if you unselect all of them and then just pick the ones that say URM next to them, that will get you what you are looking for. So once all, we have all those highlighted, we can apply that. So now we can see that there are 46 underrepresented minority faculty in the College of Medicine for the 2016-17 school year. So it's just as easy as that in order to go out and find answers to data that um, are using the data to answer those questions that you have. So one thing I'll mention about our website, so if we go back to the interactive fact book landing page, um, with our website, what the information we put out here, it's all frozen. Um, so we freeze our data and then that's what we use. We clean it up and we send it to our regulatory bodies. Um, and that is kind of our official data then. Um, so some major census dates for when we freeze the data for enrollment, it's October 15th for fall enrollment and then March 15th for spring. And then we freeze our faculty data on November 1st. So we kind of take a snapshot of the data and then we clean it up and then it has to get approved by those regulatory bodies once we send it to them. 
So because we have to wait for them to kind of filter through the data themselves and um, kind of approve it, we only put information, new information up there once it's been approved so that it can be consistent with all other historical reporting about the university. And then again, these are very high level aggregates. So even though you can filter down and use some of those things like college um, and the demographic related things, we don't go below the college level. So things like department and by primary major are not up here on the website, um, as well as like college and department on faculty and employees. Um, but those kinds of things are available on our Tableau server. So say we wanted to know who those specific 46 underrepresented minority faculty were. If we were to go back out to the um, faculty workbook on the website and then if you are to scroll down there's this kind of block right here and it says university staff and faculty with appropriate credentials can go to this same workbook on Tableau server so I'm going to click that link and so using my link blue credentials so this is where you would have to request that access Yes, yes. So you can't, like, if you were to go right now, if you all don't have access to it, you're not going to, you're going to get an error message on there. But once you request access, you can. So then this is what our Tableau server kind of looks like. Um, so this is the exact same workbook that's out on our website, but it has more information on it. Um, so things like going down below the college level on the faculty. Um, we've also got current up-to-date information on it. So whereas what's out on our website has been frozen and it's kind of in the past, we've got other workbooks that are able to refresh daily so that you can see changes and things. Um, with you all with library data, I could think that you all would want to see up to date what books are being, you know, checked out and things like that. What kind of traffic have we gotten into the library, things like that. Yeah. So if I understand correctly, there's the Tableau server. So if the library, for example, wanted to start creating dashboards, yes. then the library could have space on this server where the raw data and the workbooks could be placed, and then we could just do something like on our website where we could show some publicly available data. Yes, as long as it was publicly available data. That, that's right. the only caveat. Right. Yep. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? <laughs> so my question is, if the library as a college, say, mm -hmm. wanted to start creating dashboards using Tableau, the library can have server space in mm -hmm. the Tableau server to have, to have the workbooks as a whole, but then we could publish, like, to our website dashboards with data that we would like to make publicly available. Yeah. So the question was, <laughs> can the library um, acquire space on the Tableau server in order to house workbooks and then be able to take those and publish them publicly for other people to see on their website? And so the answer to that is yes. So you all would get access um, once you all get like signed up sure. with Tableau server and everything. We can make you all a project folder for the libraries and then you all, whoever has the desktop, and we'll get into what desktop is here in a little bit, but um, you all could have a person or two who is working on creating the reports and publishes them up to Tableau server and then you could embed that workbook itself once you kind of um, remove access to the database itself, which we would be able to help you with figuring that out. That took a long process for us to do. Yeah. Then you could publish it to the website. And I'll yeah. also say um, here when I kind of go over what Tableau Public is, we can do the exact same thing on Tableau Public. Okay. So we can talk about it again then. Yeah. I was just going to ask, are there other colleges who are doing uh, that sort of thing right now? Oh, yes. We uh, Well, I don't know about putting it up on their website, mm -hmm. but there are, I think we've got a folder for just about every college out there. There are also different business units who have their own folder right now on Tableau Server. Um, so I'll show you in a minute. Um, what the kind of structure of Tableau Server looks like. Um, you're not going to have access to all the folders that you're going to see because we're on my account. But yeah, when you get access to Tableau Server, you can get access to your specific folder and see the projects in there and see other things that other people have created. But it's not as complicated as there aren't doing that right now. Um, so so um, over in the Office of Research, they're publishing out using Tableau. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think there are any colleges doing that specifically. Um, we do have over on healthcare side, they're publishing a lot out on their website, but I don't know of any specific colleges. You could be the first if you wanted. There you go. <laughs> 
All right, so if there aren't any other questions, I'll, all right, no, you are fine. It's all about being inquisitive. Um, so now on the Tableau server side, so again, like I said, this is the same exact workbook as what's out on the website. It's just got more things on it. Um, so one of the other things that you can't find out on our website, but you can't find on Tableau server are kind of unit level um, listings of people. Um, so I think it's pretty obvious why we would not want to have that out on our website. What student and all their information out there. Um, so you can get to some of that in Tableau server. So like I posed the question, who are those 46 underrepresented minority faculty? Um, we can go and find them. So using the faculty listings page, if we apply the same filters, so we're going to do, we've got academic year 2016-17. We'll pick only the URM ethnicities. And then we will pick College of Medicine. So now we can see we can get that same number of 46 just like we got out on the website. But now we can see listings of what departments those faculty are in. What is their tenure? Um, what's their email address? If you were looking for this in order to try to contact people and get a list of their emails or use that through their link blue ID. You could get that through our kind of unit level pages that we have. Um, so that's another one of the different features that's on Tableau server that's not out on our website and publicly available. So I'll go ahead and show you all then. So I mentioned that we could get to here going through our website and using that little clicking link down there at the bottom. But if you just go to analytics.uky.edu, so it's the same as our um, email that we have just without the at, san at sign, it's just a period. Um, when you log in, same thing, you'll log in with your um, link blue credentials once you get to that web page. Um, but once you get in there, you'll see this kind of setup. So there are project folders. Um, so just like any other kind of folder, it's just a listing um, of something with more underneath of it. So again, there are project folders for the different colleges out there. There are ones for different business units. Um, and then of course, there are a couple of things that we use as our own team, um, but you can scroll through them just like you know the document finder on your own computer. And then within those folders, once you click on them, you can see the listings of the different workbooks that are available. And then you can click on those workbooks and be able to look at um, the different dashboards that are available within those workbooks and use the same features that we used out on the website, like the filters, like the population selectors, um, clicking on the data to bring it to the forefront. All those same things are gonna work in here as well. So when you get access to um, Tableau Server, you're gonna get access to two things automatically. Um, one of those is the user resources, and that has information about, you know, organizational units within um, the university, so kind of like a roll-up hierarchy of how that works, and then there are also different workbooks about um, users within Tableau Server itself, so you can see what groups you're a part of, what folders you have access to. Um, and then there's also a code book, so that's for student data. Um, so if you're looking at a workbook and you don't know what a certain uh, field means, um, out in our code book we have definitions of what, what our different fields mean. So you could go to that kind of as a dictionary to go, go find information about things. And then you'll also get access to our Open Labs project folders. Like I mentioned, I usually give this presentation at our Open Labs. Um, so we'll put different workbooks. If somebody is showcasing something that was within Tableau, um, we'll put that out on our open labs folder or just a couple of other things. And you have edit privileges in Tableau server. So there are kind of view privileges and then edit privileges. So you can have edit within open labs and kind of play around and get to know how to move the different data elements in there and kind of customize reports within Tableau server but those are the two folders that you'll have automatic access to. I didn't realize how many I had. This is a long scroll. But yes, so the Open Labs folder. So there are different, different workbooks within there as well that you can take a look at. They may or may not be pertinent to you all and what you all are doing, but just as a way to kind of get used to the environment and things like that. Um, so yeah, are there any other questions as of right now about Tableau Server? All right, so then like I mentioned, Tableau Server is kind of like a big Google Drive, a 
shared area for you to put workbooks. So if you all were wanting to create your own reports, say you wanted to make something that looks like what I had out on the website, that is Tableau Desktop. So desktop would be um, software that you download onto your computer. Um, it costs, I think it's $1,200 um, for the license, um, but you would go through, I think UK, we have our own um, a person who manages that through Tableau um, because we have so many people getting it at UK. And um, that is where you would make your own custom reports, um, how you could connect to the data source so you all have your own database of information. You could connect to that data um, base that you have and use that data to flow through into Tableau, pull over different field elements and create the same um, you know, pie charts, time series, things like that to look at your all's data. So that's what Tableau Desktop is and kind of the difference. So Tableau Server is an area for you to view um, the different reports and Tableau Desktop is where you can create them. So we like to say that there should be less people with Tableau Desktop, less people creating the reports so that they kind of know what they are working with and know the data very well and then be able to publish those out for other users to be able to see and to use on a daily basis um, for whatever questions they're trying to answer with the data. So. Do me a favor for the recording mm -hmm. and point out since we've got a lot of students, um, some of whom may be listening, you can get Tableau Des Desktop as a student for free. Right? That's the part I'm going over when I'm okay. Yes. Okay, okay. So if there aren't any more questions for me, so again, if you want to come to Tableau Open Labs, you can hear this again if you want, or like I said, it's out on our website so you can view the presentation again. Um, but yes, so that's all available. But if there are no other questions, I'll pass it back off to Mary Pat. All right. All right, thank you for the leading question because that should be the next slide. Okay, are we good on slides and audio? And I'll get out of the way. Okay, so good question. Can I get a Tableau desktop for free? <laughs> um, so yes, Tableau desktop licenses are available for both students and instructors. So Tableau wants the academic community to get involved. You can have it for a year, and then I think their hope is that you go and buy it or that you get people hooked on it and you say, this is a great tool, and then purchase it. So yes, if there are students or instructors um, to request the free license, I've got the link right here. You visit their academic programs page. And um, if you have a Tableau desktop license with the one-year student or instructor, um, license key, it's the exact same functionality as the full desktop license. Does that answer your question? Any other questions about that? We have several students that um, work for us that have gone out and they've used this version and they are still able to work on all of the same projects that we work on published up to our Tableau server. All of that. Um, so we specifically wanted to cover Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server the way that UK uses it, but there's also this thing called Tableau Public. So Tableau Public has a lot less connection capabilities, but it's the exact same tool. So if this is something you're interested in, I honestly haven't checked it out because I use the desktop version, the full version, but I do know people who have, and it has the same capabilities. There's just less things that you can connect to. Um, for instance, you could connect to Excel though. If you had some data, say you pulled some data, iPads data down, or you could even export some data maybe out of a database that you have, put it into Excel, you can get Tableau Public for free, and you can connect to that data, and then you can publish it up to the Tableau Public site and it's kind of the same capability as having a Tableau server. Um, the reason that we, my team has not done that is because our data is sensitive and we don't want people having access to that. But if you have data that is publicly available that either is aggregated or, you know, it's just publicly available information, I think Tableau Public is a great thing to look into. Um, so this screenshot, all it shows is the differences between what you can connect to with the full version of Tableau Desktop and then what you can connect to with Tableau Public. This Google Sheets is new. That Google Sheets connector is something I've been waiting for for a while, so I'm excited to check that out. That was just released in this latest version that came out a couple weeks ago. So I've got the, uh, the link right here for Tableau Public if you want to go check it out. Um, so basically, 
you, and, and this is me, I've, I've been trying to learn it the last couple of days so I can tell you about it. Um, so basically they've got a viz of the day that's up there and you can go to one of their existing ones and download the data and it'll download into Tableau and then you can change, you can use their data and change around the visualization. So it's a kind of like a nice practice playground if that's something you're interested in. Um, and there's also what's called the Tableau Public Gallery, which I just went out there and I searched on library and there was a ton of stuff out there. So I was going to show you some of the things that I found. If you're following along, you can either go click on some of these or you can go search on some of these. So one that I found was the effect of snow on library traffic. So this is something that somebody built in um, Tableau Public and they published it out for the world to see. So this is Westchester University. I think I, think I looked it up and they were Pennsylvania maybe? Um, okay, out of, uh, right outside of Philadelphia. Um, so if we go out there and click on this, it's going to look very similar to what Shelby has been showing you and how we use it, but it's, it's out on a publicly available site for everybody. You don't have, any, have to have any credentials. Um, what? Of course. Of course it did. Oh, come on. This is really neat. I want you to see it. Maybe it was another yeah, a different browser. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, so you can see the little tablet public piece up there. And um, so everybody has a profile, so this just says Kim. She wanted the publish this day to share it out the world. So it's got the slide bar, and I was looking, I was more interested in, in this time period right here where I, I don't, if it even snows a little bit, I don't get out of the house. So there is absolutely no way in March that I would be out there in that snow. Um, but they've got, you know, they've got their line chart of snow, and then they've also got their visits. Um, what I was going to look for down here. Okay, so down at... The bottom right, they've got a download button. So that's where you could download that Tableau desktop that Kim created, and it's gonna come down with the data. It's gonna come down as a package workbook. And you could, I, I don't know, you can do whatever you wanna do with that. All right. Another one, go ahead. That doesn't affect what's actually published, right? It's just no. for us to kind of play with. No, oh, right, you couldn't publish back, I guess you could try to publish back up over what she had done, but it would probably ask you to save this something okay. different. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So that, that's a good question. So Tableau Desktop is a client tool on your computer. So anything that you're doing there is really only saved in your space. Um, it would be when you published it back up to Tableau Public or to like, the UK Tableau server, that would be where, you know, it would make a change. Um, I also like this mapping one. So Tableau, I think you all did something on maps and yeah, GIS. GIS, yeah. So, so Tableau has started to have some cool capabilities in that area as well. Um, so this one is a map of, let's see, which campus was this? Um, I don't remember which campus. Um, okay. There we go. Buffalo. Buffalo, University of Buffalo. So University of Buffalo, they've got it broken out by different libraries and then for different fiscal years. And um, they've also got this gate counts dashboard. So they've just got different visualizations of it. But what I thought was cool was the map. So I don't know if you can see that. So there we go. So these are gate count visits to different areas on campus. Um, something that I thought might be neat for our university is, you know, doing the same thing, but then looking at, you know, student dorms or classroom buildings, kind of mapping those on there as well, and um, looking at traffic time. So times during the day, you know, what does the traffic look like? All 
Okay, so so those are different things that you can go look out, out on Tableau Public to get a better idea of what other people are doing with Tableau and, and maybe some things that are more specific to you all. Um, training opportunities, these videos. So like I said, we have a lot of student interns that join us and the first thing we tell them is, all right, go watch some Tableau videos. So I know there's at least 20 hours of videos out there because that's what they do their first week. <laughs> so tons of stuff. Um, most of it covers Tableau desktop. Um, and, but like Shelby was showing you, Tableau server has pretty much the same capabilities edit wise as Tableau desktop does. There's a new e-learning offering. Um, so if you're looking to pay for something, this e-learning offering, it's self-paced. You can go through their, they have a fundamentals and an advanced course. It's a four day course. Um, Shelby took the in-person version and I think we've had several other people take it and they've been very impressed with it. Um, the classroom training, that's what Shelby attended. Um, I've, I haven't done the live online training, um, so I don't know much about that. There's starter kits. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of stuff out there if it's something that you end up getting interested in. Tableau Communities. There's a conference that we send several people to each year. Um, it's a three-day event and it just brings together, not people just from higher education, but people from every industry together to talk about Tableau. And there's also our Lexington and Tableau user group. Um, we have Alex Dixon from our team who has started this up. And so these are people across Lexington who are using Tableau. And so usually they come and they do a demonstration of what they're working on, um, you know, tips and tricks that they've learned in Tableau. They'll bring questions about, hey, I'm stuck on this. Can you help me with this? So we've got that as well. So that was basically what we wanted to tell you all today. What kind of questions you have, or is there anything you want to take a minute to look at? We could. Have you guys talked to the GIS unit on campus? No, we have not. In we... facilities, they map the. They're responsible for doing all the mapping on campus. Yes, it, and they're pretty excited about collaborating. People that they would love to I, I we have pulled in some GIS data and I think we did get it from facilities yeah. just as a proof of concept but we have not gotten to the point where yeah we've been able to really integrate that and work on that I think that would be really neat it's kind of been a newer advancement yeah. within Tableau so yeah it is definitely interesting though, especially looking at something like a university campus in mm -hmm. order to find that kind of mm -hmm. data and see what's cool with it yeah I know one thing we're really interested in is the time it takes students to walk either from their dorm to classes from class to class and and um, kind of just the traffic. All right, well thank you all for having thank us. You so